so I've got a, a bunch of carving sticks here at different stages. Um, this one is pretty well cleaned up here. And uh, uh, I, everything that I've learned about these is uh, you, uh, if you're cutting green saplings, you need to uh, dry these as much as a year per inch. Uh, so I've, I've read anything from three months to a year. Now a lot of these I found locally they were already uh, they were trees that were cut down, they were laying on the ground or they were tilted you know against another tree or something but they were basically cut down and I can feel in this one um, that it's uh, there's there's some moisture in it. It's not too bad now even in a couple days but when I first took the bark off I could definitely feel it but I have some other ones that are a lot more dry they were actually laying on the ground for quite a while and the big difference is here's an example of here's an example of one this does not peel very easily so if I take one that's that's very green this one is I wouldn't call it green I didn't cut it uh, down fresh but uh, I have a knife here one of these old utility knives and I, I kind of reshaped it and polished it. It's a nice, it's a nice roughing knife. Um, but I don't want to cut that one because I'm going to save the bark on that one. Let me grab another piece. Okay, so this one is, is uh, I wouldn't call it totally green. I didn't cut it down. It's been down for a while, but I think it was downed recently. And this is, uh, the bark is very flexible. There's a greenish uh, tint right in here, and when you feel it, it's got that damp feel. It feels like damp ground, um, and that uh, that's going to take a little while to dry. Uh, but some of the older stuff, here's the one that had been down a while longer, and you can see. First of all, this is harder. When you uh, when you tap on it, it's got a hear that. It's got more of a resonance to it where this has a dead sound to it. It's really kind of just doesn't ring at all. When the, when it gets drier it's going to sound, it's going to be more like a you're going to have a tone. It's going to have a woody tone like a xylophone to it. And also when you go to uh, to clean this the bark will, will peel off if you get it right you can actually peel quite a long section of it off. It's not doing it now but but uh, you can see the the uh, um, the pith or whatever you want to call this that's underneath the bark on the outside. It's part of the bark is browner. It's much drier. This whole thing feels drier. It sounds drier. It doesn't have that cold feel to it. Okay, so this is probably not. I don't know what the moisture content. It's probably not 100%. But it's much harder getting this bark off at this point. So. This will not have to dry as long because this has already been drying on the ground. So you don't want something that's completely rotten and the and the bark just falls right off of it, uh, and the wood is is begun, to, you know, a decaying process because then it's not going to be uh, a sturdy wood. These greener pieces, like this one, when this dries, once I've taken the bark off and when this dries, it's going to be really hard and strong and it'll be lighter, but uh, it won't. It'll last forever. Whereas if you just left the bark on it left it outside, it's going gonna, it's gonna to possibly decay. Sorry, I had the radio on there. Uh, so anyway, I wanted to talk about uh, getting the bark off these. So first of all, I'm using this, just a knife that I'm skinning most of the bark off with. And then I'm left with this, um, this part that's, that's under the bark, but it kind of wants to stay with the, with the wood here a little bit. But, it, but you don't want that really as part of your stick. So I've tried a number of different tools. I've tried rasps. i tried sanders. I even tried, you know, like a grinding bit. Uh, all kinds of stuff. And, a, and even a knife. I just keep, you know, shaving away to get all that off. But here it is. This is the tool right there. Cheap or, you know, red one of these Red Devil tools that uh, you just get in the paint store or any hardware store. What I did was I took this blade out and I cut off uh, about half an inch and then I re-rounded it. And the reason I did that is because when you're scraping this off it gets all clogged up in there. So what I did was I took the bottom you can do this with a file but I also uh, I use a piece of paper and I kind of clean this up underneath here 
and I just take the top and put it right on my sanding belt and just take it right down to a sharp sharp point okay and then uh, clean off the burr or sandpaper or a file and then that guy just scrapes off beautifully and the handle is comfortable so you can just scrape away and boy that gets everything off then it is a flat blade so it'll give you a series of little flat kind of facets on there so you don't really want that so then what I do is I use this uh, flex cut I have a, a set of these and this has a round um, profile on it and that I go as I'm rotating my stick and that takes all those last little high spots off there and that's you're not going to want to sand that you can't you don't want to do anything to it if you sand it you're going to make it worse so it's already as good as it can be and what's great is with this tool if it's sharpened if this is sharpened properly this is what you're going to get you're going to get shavings from both of these tools and that's telling you it's sharp and that's giving you a nice finish on there so that's it and that's where I'm leaving these sticks you can see it here I want to get all this stuff here off and then I'll have a stick like this nice and clean very smooth and then I'm gonna stack these away I think I'm gonna probably invest in it I mean a lot of the dryness you can actually feel it you can feel the stick is dry you can feel that it's um, that it's lighter than it was originally um, but I did uh, like I said these were partially dry so I'm not as worried about them uh, cracking the other thing I did was I took my wood burner and I put uh, the date and the year right there, 411. And then I also took each of these. Uh, I melted some candle wax and I dipped both ends in the candle wax. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, here's a piece. I'm leaving the bark on this one so I can work with that later. But here's some wax. I dipped it in wax. And that'll help slow down the, the cracking, the, the release of moisture a little bit so it won't crack as much on the ends, hopefully. So here's a couple offcuts uh, from some of the uh, sticks that I did, and uh, these are about a week old. And I just wanted to show you this was a, a fresh cut and not treated in any way. And you can see all that checking. Some of it's coming down the side of the stick right there, almost three quarters of an inch. The other end I dipped in some wax, and you can see it's still there's no checking that's showing no visible checking anyway so and then here's another piece this one's a little bit longer this one's about 18 inches long pretty big check on the end there that's only going to get worse and it's going down the side and here's the other end almost no checking on there that has wax so the dipping it in the wax seems to help quite a bit and then uh, I'll stack these probably in the rafters uh, for a few months but at least I have the date on there and uh, I think I'm going to probably invest in a little moisture meter at some point probably should have that anyway this one's pretty dry I can feel this and uh, what I did was uh, a lot of these I'm, I'm making the maximum height probably up to my nose my chin something like that and then I'll cut them down a little bit and I'm allowing extra so that if the end does check even a couple inches I can still cut it off and use it but these were much much longer so I have pieces here this is like about 18 20 inches long I have a bunch of these uh, so that I can experiment on them and try different things here I've got uh, I'm playing around with the idea of doing some wood burning on this kind of fun so I might actually uh, do that on some of these sticks and of course carving and I save these little guys at the end I save all these little pieces because they're fun to just take with you bring a couple of these in a car and your knife and just leave them uh, laying around in the car and if you get stuck in traffic you, get, you got something you can whittle and these could be turned into who knows what right some kind of animal or a person or whatever you know uh, use your imagination so I'm holding on to those so that's my little bit about sticks I'm not a stick expert but I've been reading up on it and uh, this is what I've learned so far so uh, but the big tip of the day is this thing man this is this gets that bark off there like like nobody's business all right